in the intro classes, I started teaching them game mechanics and design without having to worry about the tools. So we do tabletop games, we do a card game, do a board game, work as a team, learn what makes good player engagement, how do you hold attention, how do you, how do you scale difficulty over a number of levels or, or, or rounds or whatever, and get those basics down. And then, a year later, I can teach you how to use these funky digital tools and you can apply what you already know to those tools and you end up with good levels and good games within a controlled scope. We're not making any MMOs here. Early on, when I'm trying to justify why they're sitting there cutting cardboard things out and using colored pencils to make games. And I say, well, look, this is the first step to making a computer game. Uh, you mentioned The Sims. Uh, a good story that I bring up in class is Spore and how the creature creator, the whole tool for making your creatures and in the, in the, how you can take the legs and arms and all kinds of stuff, that came to be one night at 2 a.m. when he was messing around with refrigerator magnets. He went down to his kitchen to get a snack and it was covered with family pictures and all that kind of stuff. And he was trying to come up with a way to prototype out what he had in his head and it struck him that he could do it with the magnets. And so he ran back to his office, grabbed all the sticky notes, ripped all the family pictures off the fridge, and was sticking bodies, torsos, arms, legs, heads on the magnets, and was seeing, oh yeah, and how you can just plug them together, and then you know each of the, the graphical representation would bring along the baggage of the uh, statistical, you know, what kind of leg, what kind of claw you were using. And then he's like, okay, now it's like five in the morning, I really need some sleep. So he literally police taped off the refrigerator and left notes like, family, do not touch. No one's allowed in their fridge, and then went off to go to sleep. A couple hours later, the rest of the family wakes up and like, what are we supposed to do for breakfast? Like, daddy locked the fridge. Breach was an early Mac game, same idea. Uh, XCOM, the, the first version of XCOM was, you know, you get so many action points, move the guys along. Uh, I also, uh, Starfleet Battles, the old Star Trek combat, Starship Combat was, you know, turns, phases, impulses, it broke down all the different, until you were doing, you know, micro time units. And so if you were gonna go, if your ship only had a speed of five, and this ship had a speed of 10, he got two turns to every one of yours, because they were going twice as fast. And so you could, so you could basically simulate any kind of computer game with, yeah, paper, dice, and magic markers. The modern video game industry has gotten so huge with projects with 30, 40, 150 people on them that it's a very constraining industry. With so much money on the line, there's no room for risk. And very tight schedules, marketing, uh, retail, you know, having to set up deals and all that stuff. Proof of concept, uh, especially nowadays, you go to producer, you pretty much approach them with an 80% complete game and saying, we just need to finish it, and we need your marketing and legal and testing and, and distribution ability, but here's the game. Because they're not gonna trust a design doc, they're not gonna trust a fake proof of concept level that was totally hardwired. So you have to have a functioning game. And Sounds like Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as uh, you know, a, a penniless independent developer, you can't risk your own idea of investing in the time of coding and, and asset development unless you actually know the game's gonna work. So you gotta do that in paper, you do that in a day. And, and, and then run around, play test that with some other designers or local groups. If they get bored or confused just trying to do the, that version, then you know you've gotta retool it before you move on.